When you are aware of breath, you are not doing the breathing. Breathing is happening. It is the part of autonomic nervous system. So by doing so, You are creating a quantum shift from doing to being. You are being present with what is present. Breath is present. the breath rather than do pranayama, you're creating a shift from ego mind as a doer to being that is doing with its own innate intelligence to the autonomic nervous system. The presence that you are <clears throat> is omnipresent, undivided, formless whole. And to enter that formless state of being, if we draw from thought forms, and material form, the body, and that svalpratyara, when you do that, you enter into non-doing being we call meditation. When you are practicing meditation, you're practicing the technique <laughs> that take you into meditative state. And when meditation is happening, the doer disappears. Then the real meditation is happening.
the presence that you are cannot be accessed through the mind. As long as you are engaged into doing through the medium of the mind, you are staying further and further away from the being that you are. Allow yourself to drop even deeper into non-doing stillness. gradually <clears throat> open your eyes. Meditation is the only door to step out of the time bound journey into timeless being from the mind to the being so when we are about to fall asleep we are moving into non-doing just naturally and spontaneously because sleep is our inborn survival level gift. We don't have to learn how to fall asleep. So, if somebody is suffering from insomnia, they try to fall asleep. When you try, it keeps you awake. But then, person who is having insomnia, they don't know how not to try to fall asleep. That's why they have insomnia. Why? Because this we have lived such a stressful way of interacting with life, life situations, and all intimate relationships that is creating so much stress that is that is violating the body's natural function of naturally falling asleep. Like naturally, we have a digesting capacity. So all the natural capacities, biological functions of the body get disturbed when there is too much stress that is taking place on a mental level. So if you want to change your life, you can change at the level of mind but that will be called reformation. But if you really want to change at the much deeper level, it is called transformation. So transformation cannot happen through the medium of the mind. That is why yoga is about how to create, the, how to enter the meditative state so that you can initiate the process of entering closer and closer to yourself, which is silent, 
awareness. It does not choose. So when we are born, with the breath in, enters the sense of I am consciousness, but it remains as a potential and when it manifests in the body, it divides itself into the polarity of male and female. So this I am that remains as a potential, in yoga it is called Ardha Narishwar Shiva. Shiva is painted half male and half female, but in order to manifest, it divides into two. But that is the evolutionary process where human beings have evolved from animal state of being to the self, subconscious animal state to self-conscious ego mind. So we are like 7.10 billion people on this earth. They're mostly, most people are just exploring their human potential through the medium of their mind in the dimension of time. But we are also being potential. So when you find, when we find that this making it happen from being, so human beings are, we are born in the subconscious state with the childhood. So the, the infants, they do not know yet, I am consciousness. And they, they have no sense like mother or father or they don't, they are more like a, in the primitive state already functioning through the instinct Therefore, they feed themselves, they do everything through the instinct. So they are not the doer. So once, when we want to learn to go back to the oneness experience, <clears throat> like infants, like child, children, we have to learn how to step out of the mind. That's why Christ said, unless, unless you be like children again, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Do you understand? So this is the process of returning to childlike purity. And our subconscious is pure. And it is, it has no past impressions. It has no future. It is just like animals. Animals, they don't have a choice. Why? Because they survive in the outer world through the instinct. Instinct is impersonal. They don't have personal choice. Like, like tiger moving through the jungle, all of a sudden sees the magnificent elephant. Oh my God, what a majestic body and a majestic walk. I should be vegetarian, <laughs> not available. They do not have choice. Everything is already pretty programmed. And for animals, they don't have choice, like mind has a choice. Human beings who have evolved, they only have choice. They don't have a choice. Like mating season is coming, and they say, oh my God, it's too slow. When would it come? They don't, because it's a biological urge. There is no mind that is saying, I am anxious to get it faster. And when it is gone, think that I wish it had long, lived a little longer not available because they don't have a choice. They operate purely through instinct. So the yogis discovered that first stage is how to move from self-conscious ego mind that lives in the memories of the past and projections into the future. They're all mental. There is no existential reality. How many of us, they have so many memories of the past that drives our perceptions and interactions with life and just create so many blockages. And then we try to solve it in the future. That is also not existential. It's personal projections. So how to enter 
I have to transcend the time where transformation happens. That is the yoga practice. So when you learn how to enter the present moment, when all the healing miracles happen, why? Because all the health problems that and the traumas that many people have traumas in their life from the coming back from the war or some loved one dying or surviving and going through a painful divorce or children, child dying, anything. These are all memories of past. And they live in our unconscious because when you experience anything that is like this at the level of the mind, you, it does not get concluded. It is always unresolved experience. Therefore, it never completed God's thought. Therefore, it lives within us as a karmic impressions. In yoga, it is called samskaras, impressions. And that impressions, they come up by association. When somebody triggers the similar association, like if you had a conflict with a, with a husband who had a gruff voice, built big body, bald head, and somebody similar, you see all of a sudden, you treat him with the memory. He's not the person. He triggered your old memory, and then you don't like him. So do you see that many times we like some people just for no reason? And we hate some people, we don't like. Because there are memories, so we have no perception of reality when we see it through the memories of the past. And that is the biggest inhibition. That is what is called karmic impediments that prevents us from living the fullness of life and experiencing the life as it is. We are experiencing we are trying to experience better than it was, or more than what it was. But that is all mental process. So the way to get back to a quantum shift is to just be able to see what is as is. So this, so anything you want to remove, like for example, you got caught into some reactive interaction which always happens with intimate relationship. So what I say, often like if you, if you want to really get rid of all the old karmic past, you don't have to go to a psychiatrist to tell you what is wrong with you. Just get married <laughs> and they will show you everything will come up. <laughs> everything that you are running from, when you try to get back into intimate relationship, that which prevented you in the past to get in touch with the intimate relationship outside will come back again and prevent you from there not in the beginning but as you progress further in the dimension of time so ultimately what i'm saying is you won't find the better relationship by finding the better person you have to be the better person and that is where you have to go through Quantum shift means you have to let go of looking for it outside and let go inside. Okay? This is called meditation. And that is the real, most people don't know what meditation is and what it does. It does you, it gets you out of your own way. So, the greatest, the arch enemy of you lives in you as you. And you identify with it, means when you identify with angry thoughts about yourself, others, fearful thoughts about yourself, others, or your life, that enemy is just working day and night. I would say that is, you can really let go of that. That's where your life will begin to change. It is not reformation of the past, which ego can do from the past to the future, because the future is a reformed past. 
It cannot be any other way because we are trying to solve the problem coming from the outside of the past. Now we are trying to find the outside change so the problems don't come from outside. <laughs> you can't find somebody who will not be as irritable, but ultimately irritation lives in you. That will not go away. So this is why, this is why I call this practice I am yoga, returning back to the source that I am. And the source is love. And that love is not the love that we human love, which is called attraction. Attraction is not love. It is unconditional love. This heart is the unconditional love. So how to get to it so that you you, you can just see, give love because once you have connected to the heart center, the love center inside of yourself, now you can truly love unconditionally. And as long as you have conditions that in your heart, the part of the heart is possessed by the anger, fear, hatred, jealousy, self-rejection, all that happened when we're looking for love from somebody else. So the heart got, got heart energy of love and feeling, intense love, got converted into emotional disturbances. So then how to let go of that? So that is where in the practice of yoga, you learn how to maneuver any reactive perception is reactivated action of the past. It's not just it wasn't there and you have it. You, there's nothing that comes in life is just because of some accident or some God did that to you or somebody did that to you. Everything is as a consequence of the seed that you have planted in the past. There is nothing. And the consequence is you as a perceiver has, is, this, is seeing the consequence is not as it is happening, but the way you see is the consequence of how you live and what kind of reactive perceptions you have planted in the past. So everything, any kind of conflict that seems to be coming from the loved one relationships, yeah, they are the consequences of how you planted the seeds of karma in the past. That is the meaning of karma. So the entire practice of yoga is how to release that karma. And that karma is, is goes, it is using the energy of subconscious and it is built into unconscious, even below the subconscious. So, why, how to disengage it? So the animals do not choose. They, they interact with life situations simply by biological urges, no personal mind. So they, they're, they're, they're having impersonal choices just for the sustenance, survival, and the well-being of the body, that's it. So they live in a choiceless awareness below the ego mind, but human beings have choice. And that choice, it comes through the medium of the mind. So the body, in the body, and in the entire body of creation, there is a co-creative interplay of consciousness and energy. All the entire evolving tree, from the mineral life, plant life to animal life, they don't have choice. So they live in perfect harmony with their own body and body of entire creation. In, in the West, it is called the Garden of Eden. Have you heard about that? As a crazy owner, is just so paranoid and so angry and so suicidal, and a dog is still just saying, 
He's wagging his tail, he's happy, nothing bothers him. And that is why sometimes we say to have a dog is very healing. But to, instead of having a dog, just turn it around, turn it when you turn around, G O G to G O D as your city, as your own consciousness. That will be a good bet. So this is amazing to really understand so that you can manage your own mind rather than find the become the victim of people, places, and things that you, you became the victim yourself by the way you perceived it. And now, once you know how it works, you are no longer the victim. You are empowered to disband all the false concepts you carry about yourself, people, places, and things, all the expectations you have about yourself, all the choices you have made. That means everything that is conditioned lives in the form of habits and behavior patterns and built into personality. So pranayam is very powerful medium to change. So I would say that learn pranayam. <clears throat> and suppose you are having any kind of anxiety attack. If you just go jogging, pranayam happens. Take a cold shower with Icelandic water <laughs> and scream and it begins to change. Why? Because it is built into your energy field and energy begins to change. So change your body, change your breath. So breath or, or sing or dance, do something physically and that will change your energy from thinking to feeling in your body. So there are many different ways you can change. So most people, those who are caught, like when they come to yoga yoga <coughs> trainings, and many people, when they caught, they don't even know just to think positively. They just forget everything because their mind is so going so crazy. The thoughts of anger or fear are so revolving, so smart, so consistently all the time in such a chaotic way. And all of a sudden they say, oh, I am completely at peace with myself. Wow, I forgot that. I feel better. And then with breathing, all of a sudden, they begin to change what they are feeling. And they have amazing change that they were trying to bring with it having tranquilizers, which is chemical change. So when you, when you have anxiety thoughts, fearful thoughts, that is also putting the stress in your energy and it is adding toxic chemicals in your system. So, and then with this system, through pranayama or some form of exercise, you are creating a shift from thinking to feeling. So if you keep at the thinking level and you identify with your thoughts as the reality, and then you try to, you go into this, get caught into the same reactive thoughts, but when you make a shift from thinking to feeling, from head to heart, from mind to the body, in the body, automatically, body doesn't do what mind can do. It cannot repeat the same feeling. If you live in the feeling, and where there also you will have hard time maintaining feeling. So if you're feeling pain, just feel the pain that anxiety has brought, that you have created for a while. So then body, if you don't air any more through the mind, the body will begin to restore the balance automatically. Mind cannot. Therefore, you create a shift from thinking to feeling and from mind to the body. And body automatically begins to the homeostasis of the autonomic nervous system begins to bring the balance. You have to just wait without judging or getting fearful about feeling also. And sometimes it takes time, but once you cultivate that ability, you can solve the problems of thinking through feeling. And then when you solve it at the level of feeling, 
you have dismantled an unconscious energetic block in that particular area, that particular layer that is separating you from the source of love is now worked out. So try some small things in the beginning. Don't try very difficult, highly emotionally charged, extreme fears or extreme attachment. Don't try to use this technique. It's like uh, going to a gym and trying to start with lifting 200 pounds. Next day you won't go. So this is start small, simple things. Learn how to disband from your reactive thoughts. And when you into, so then when you withdraw from the reactive thoughts, reactive thoughts are happening on an unconscious, pre-programmed, habitual way. So they are automatic. So then they are unconscious. So when you bring it to the subconscious level, subconscious restores the balance automatically, energetically. So all the energetic blockages in the body and memory are then erased at the, at the level of the feeling center. And when you, you see, if you can do one thing, just go home and try something like this. So any person that you have angry thoughts about yourself or other or someone, just something happen and just sit down and say, I will not stand up until I clear up my mind thinking like this and then go into objective thinking. How many good things that person has done for you? How many different ways you have liked him and loved him or her? And then make a list of all the good things that have done. <coughs> and then how often bad things they have done. Oh, just this was a very rare occasion. Well, do I want to keep going? Of course you'll say no. Do you like going like that? How do you feel inside? I don't like feel like that. Okay, then I want to stop it. Yes, I can stop it. So if you like it, keep going. But if you don't like it, you can stop it. So that is the way you go from thinking to feeling to disbanding that unconscious, uh, real, reactively processed memory thoughts that are again repossessing your mind and you are, you are possessed, it's like an entity. It is not, it's such a real entity that it's like takes over your mind and it just goes <coughs> through over and over and over. And this technique is very powerful and you have the power to dispel it. You cannot go to any psychiatrist or go to any guru or, or some priest to get rid of it or God. There is nobody, it's you. Only you can do that. That is God in you. That is, and the, the ego mind, the demonic ego mind in you did it, and only God in you can undo it. This is the technique. So, this is, and once you try one time, you can let go you will say, oh my God, I can do it. You have so much power all of a sudden that, that all the disturbing thoughts come from you and you have the power to let go, nobody else. So practice this and you might just become, you may come out every time you crack the cocoon, you come out with the wings. You were before crawling and it wasn't even working. Worrying, anxiety, blaming, shaming, anger, fear, all that was abusive use of your life force. That's what is making you sick. If it's making you sick mentally and emotionally, it is showing up in your body in the form of cancer or heart attack or many different diseases. So you might as well learn and stop creating those disease conditions in your body through your mind. This is the most powerful self-healing technique. And when people during the seminars, when they go through this, some people have a spontaneous healing because 
they went to that source of love then the body just release all those tensions and energy blocks that they're keeping the this some people had a spinal adjustment right right in the middle of the class one time i was teaching in south florida where one of our i am yoga teacher was teaching so she invited me to teach and that studio was owned by two new york lawyers they had bought that studio and they were teaching bikram yoga and one of the lawyers uh, who was in my class like after the class she said could a miracle happen i said what happened she said when i was child i had such a bad scoliosis they had to put me in a cast and still it did not heal and during the session i felt like something said adjusted my spine so it is the doctor in you and god and the divine energy is are the ultimate doctors that heal you from the core my because the tension that were keeping the muscular adjustment tight when you went beyond that it can happen so any kind of health related issues you may have this this approach to meditative practice of yoga that's why i call i am yoga meditation in motion that means you're learning how to create meditative interaction with the body that through which you are doing yoga postures and you are learning how to once you know how to do that on a yoga mat you know how to do in life who are you interacting with or what are how are you interacting with work that you are doing and as soon as you know you learn how to relax how not how not to be in a fight or flight reaction on the edge means mental edge emotional edge so these are this is this is why i taught you and kamini also taught you how to go from thinking to feeling level so yes maybe we can have a little stretching and then we can go further for question and answer yes right.